Hey everybody, welcome back to the ranch. Today we've got a pretty cool project ahead of us and we're gonna start a king bed build, a Shisugi Ban burn on this bed. Something new to me, I haven't ever done it before. That process, if you haven't heard about it, there's a lot of other info around YouTube, some great other videos out there, things that I looked at before I started this project. It's going to be a, a, a few weeks, probably the total for this project. So let's jump right in. We've got a multi-step process. I'm gonna take you through every step of the way. We're gonna talk about it all in the way, but there's a lot to do. So let's get started. Enjoy. So we're gonna start out with uh, the six by six posts that we're gonna use for the bed. Uh, because of that, I had to design a way to set the posts uh, in and out of a footboard. Normally you just have a footboard connected to the post, headboard connected to the post. But because of this, uh, the big the size of this uh, bed, I had to just to figure out a way to do that. So that's what this is. You can see there the design for it. As I'm cutting these, uh, I just made the scrap cut in the middle so that I could have the ends of each six by six post stay clean. Uh, they were nicely milled. It was you know new wood. Uh, here's just you know deciding which wood, which side you want to be the grain. Um, this is a, I just drew that out so you could see how that that side rail there, that two by ten, is going to fit into the post. I'm going to notch out a notch in the post itself to so that two by ten there can set into the post. So. That's what I'm doing here, just getting that cut uh, ready. Obviously, it's not going all the way through the post, uh, so I couldn't use a circular saw or something like that. I just had to use a jigsaw. And then just cleaning it up uh, with a with a chisel, and I have an oscillating multi-tool as well that, that helped just keep things tri trimmed out. You can see a bee, look at that bee, big black bee, bumblebee came here and I think he was, I think he, the vibration of the of the machine I think was attracting him, I guess. Maybe he thought it was a friend. And just checking the fit, everything's a little tight right now, but um, it's not bad for a first run. Whoops. That wasn't the only time that happened. Uh, here I'm just making the depth measurement for the circular saw, just so that I know I'm going to the right depth that I want on that cut through the through the wood. The cut I'm making right now is for the, the bottom uh, side rail for the bed. And this one, you can see this drawing here, this one it shows a, an, a plan view from the top showing what that insert's gonna look like inside the post. So that's why it's cut at an L like that and then there'll be a lag bolt uh, going through to secure it. So that's one side that goes four inches into the post. And then underneath, you can see the other side only goes in two inches, which would sort of be the front. So that four inch side, the back side, is where we'll have an extra two inches to put a countersunk lag bolt that'll going to help secure the cross rails of the headboards and footboards into the posts. Again, that's all being done just so because the bed is so big that I have to, there has to be a way to remove the panels of the head and footboards from the posts themselves so you can carry it around. And that's, uh, this cut here is just for the top uh, cross rail that's running from the uh, one side of the bed to the other. I'm just making marks. Those two little pencil marks are just so that I don't over, uh, I don't overdo it with the multi tool. I didn't want to. I wanted to make sure I stayed at the right depth. And then of course everything just gets finished up with the chisel. Inside, you know, I'm cleaning it up a little bit, but inside it's not really important to clean it, you know, too much because I'm going to end up burning it, and a lot of that little scrap and those small fibers and hairs are going to come off in the burn process later. Uh, here, the the measurement for these washers is kind of important because as you'll see in a second the design where the one by sixes are going to go this is for the the footboard uh, i had to make sure they were set close enough so there you see the cross rail uh, a 
two by two, and then back here is the one by six. They're going to run down as decoration behind there, and then here will be another uh, two by two at the bottom. So it's important that those washers aren't going to hit that uh, that vertical running uh, one by six. And this is that notch cut into the cross rails. There's my wife coming to take a look at the progress. Here I'm just making the measurements for the for the holes that I'm going to drill into the side rails, the big 2 by 10 side rails that are going to run from the headboard to the footboard. Again, making sure those washers are spaced properly so I have enough room to have them fit well, but also enough room for that 1 by 6 to fit that will end up being behind them. And that will be clear uh, later. So here's just making pilot holes and then I'll jump back and forth pilot holes and then I'll, I was just increasing the bit size of the drill each time a little bit to eventually get them to a 5 8 and allow me to test these bolts that I bought. Six inch bolts in the end is, is what you need to go through. And the holes of course go all the way through the bolts. Will, the bolts will be decorative so you'll, you'll see them and they'll be painted uh, black. Again, now, so now I'm. Just, this is the. These are the cross rails that run from one side of the uh, left side of the bed to the right. Now I'm countersinking, creating a small countersink for the lag bolt that'll eventually fit in there, and then just finishing out the drill, uh, the drill bit for the hole. Uh, now comes the long, uh, fun but long part. Uh, just a lot of planing and a lot of distressing of the wood. Just lots and lots of planing. I only, I'm only going to show a little bit here, but you get the idea. It's, it's a lot of hand work for distressing the wood. Uh, I used a, a draw knife and a, a hand plane and uh, a couple other things I'll show here. But every single piece of the bed got distressed. It was all brand new wood from Home Depot and Lowe's. and uh, it, took, it took a lot of work to, to get it to a point where, that I liked. Yeah, probably right there you saw... <laughs> Probably shouldn't be working in sandals, but I guess I don't meet OSHA standards here in the workshop. Seriously, though, be careful if you're working with big, heavy pieces of wood and sharp objects. They'll get you. Those nails really like to fly around. Here are the one by sixes. Now I'm just making a measurement, uh, or just a bunch of measurements on the one by sixes for the cuts I need for all the boards that are going to go to the headboards and the footboards, the decorative pieces. You can see how nice the greens are. Uh, this here is a the this is the headboard. So you see a one by six and a one by eight. That's the bottom on the left, and this is the two by two that'll be part of the top decoration. And you can see a profile there I drew, so you can kind of get an idea. Again, feel free to you know pause the video, stop, and take a look at the drawings. Uh, these rough drawings I, I put up, just so you get an idea. Uh, it'll be a little bit more clear in the end here as well as we do it. So. And that's the footboard. So that's just a process of de-stressing every single piece of... That's my wife giving me a hug for all my hard labor there. It's hot. The, these these days, uh, the bed builds happening are over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So uh, around uh, 39, 40 degrees Celsius. That's just a fit cut for the rail, the big 2x2 two two rail that's going to support the the 2x4s and the, and the plywood and everything. So I was just getting it measured and making sure I had enough distance because I wanted the mattress of the bed to sink into, sit down into the side rail by about an inch. These two by twos are just getting cut or getting drilled uh, to support. They support most of the weight of the bed, so it's important they get anchored in. And now comes the fun part, the, the Shosugi Ban burn. It's, uh, I got this roofing torch. Uh, I bought it for this. I'll use it a bunch, I'm sure, but... I was really pleasantly surprised at how powerful it was and how, what a great job it did. 
made really quick work of this. It was still a long process, but it was fun. It's already hot out there, so <laughs> no more fire didn't really hurt anything. I was, of course, really careful. Be really careful if you do this. You know, uh, little bursts of 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 burning, and then make sure your wood doesn't char too much, and make real sure that you're in a an area where you're not gonna start a fire. Here I'm just, you can see the staging, so I'm just doing little steps to see how the, what the distance the torch needs to be from the wood. You can kind of get an idea. I slowed that down a little bit just so you could see roughly where I'm, where I'm working. Oh, well, I just got a thumbs up from a neighbor for using my new blowtorch. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Whatever, that was ridiculous. So here you see the really nice finished product after the char. So we did a full char on them, on all the pieces of wood. And uh, now comes the big process of decharring all the wood. So I set my little shanty town thing up here. It's a right now today that that day it's 104 degrees, 40 degrees Celsius outside. And this was just a long char process, but you can see there, so we've taken the dark stuff off the wood and it's left, a, the grains have popped out now. It's left a really nice uh, look to, to the wood. <laughs> I thought I had this really cool idea for doing all the small little pieces, but yes, you must use the force. And here you now you see after I'm wiping and stuff, you see all these like these knots and some of the green, everything. Man, it just really started to come alive. And you can get an idea there for some more of the how the greens really look in the wood. So uh, now just cleaning, 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 wiping down all the wood, getting more soot and char off all the pieces. Now I'm doing it before I oil the bed. I'm doing a dry assembly of all the parts just to check fit in square and make sure everything actually fits before I go through the process of oiling it. And I did this, you know, I built the bed in, in stages and I decided to do all the work separately to each piece rather than put the bed together and then burn it or put it together and then oil it. You know, Cause I knew that the grains and things would kind of come alive with those processes. And I wanted to take a look at it, everything and decide which pieces were going to go where uh, once I had it all done. So I built the bed knowing that, I wasn't really going to put it together until the very end. And just all the hardware getting, getting. And that's just a regular spray paint, nothing fancy, flat, uh, flat spray paint. Boiled linseed oil you see there uh, is the thing to use. Uh, it's non-toxic, which is great. You still want to wear gloves. Um, and you don't need much. Do, use it really sparingly and then just rub it into the wood well. And even with this, uh, process, you're going to want to let it sit. You know, I let it sit in my garage for, I think, probably four days to air out before I brought it in. And once I built the pieces, of course, I mean, I built the pieces, each section, and then I just let everything sit outside and air out. Here you see how beautiful this wood looks. I left one piece undone just so you can see the difference. But, and this will, you'll, you'll see it when it's dry. It looks extra orange right now, but man, did it really pop the grain and and a lot of really great knots and lines in it. It's really pretty. Uh, now comes the actual assembly part. So we, we're finished with all the processes of building the bed, the oiling and everything. Now I'm just using clamps to hold the two by twos in place on the footboard piece so that I can measure and make sure that each one by six I'm putting, you see me putting on there, will fit. So I'm just running down the line, checking the fit of each one, making sure they don't stick out the back too much. The footboard overall was a relatively simple process. Here's one of our cats. So this is just all the way down the line. And, and what I'm really setting right now is the depth of those two by twos. And once they're in place, I can go in and then nail through the backside, just nail gun the, the one by six boards in and be done. So now we're working on the head, uh, the headboard. This one's a little more complex and uh, again, I'll put that design back up, but there's a two by two on the front side of the 
f top half of it and a two by two there you see on the back side of the bottom half of it. That looks a little, it sounds confusing, I guess, when I say it, but you, you'll see how, how it works. <laughs> then I realized I put this bottom two by two in too close and there wasn't enough depth. So I had to take it all back out and grind off all the <laughs> nail gun nails and reset the depth. In the end, not a big deal. And here I'm just putting in the, the upper two by two. And then I'll set up all the one by sixes here. And I'm going to nail them into that one by eight and one by six double sandwich I have for the bottom, which helps prevent the bed from, or from having a gap behind the mattress. And now I'm just, I use a little piece of wedge, just a scrap piece of one by six there, you see, to help press the wood up against this two by two in the back so that I can anchor it in securely and there you again you see the design the profile design these are the side rails and this so the again these two by twos you see they're sitting on top are what's going to essentially hold the weight so now i'm just measuring the depth to make sure that when i set a two by four in there then i put a piece of plywood on top of it and then the mattress at the mattress will still will still be down in the thing and those little uh, small pieces of two by two that i cut You'll see in a second that that plywood, by the way, is is for the for the. I just cut holes in it for air. I made little designs in it for the heck of it, but um, I just drilled some holes in the plywood for air. Here you see the finished product in the room. Just a quick uh, shot. Some of the design work. There you see the little two by two pieces, and between each one of those, you'll have a two by four sitting that will help it balance there, so they don't move. You'll see that in a second. So here I put a couple of them in just to do a test fit with the plywood. Uh, some of them needed to be cut down, so I'll do that in a minute. And here you can see the designs that I drilled into the... Here you can get a good shot of the mattress in place. And you see the headboard here with the, the top cross rail, the bottom cross rail down here. And then here you can see the two 1x6s, the 1x6 and the 1x8 in place that help prevent anything slipping back here. If they weren't there, you have this gap that allows things to go back there. So I thought that was a, a, a pretty good solution for, for that. Okay, and here you have the cross rails now that are setting into the posts themselves. This is that L piece that we cut out earlier. Here's that countersunk leg bolt that goes in. This just helps now that we have this, this panel piece for the footboard attached to the posts themselves and allows for both pieces, the top and the bottom, to sit in here securely and be able to be stable. This can also be taken out at the end and makes it a lot easier to move the posts. So this here may be one of my favorite parts of the bed. You see how the, the these footboard cross rails sit into the post there. So they sink in and sit in there and then they're anchored in the back. And then you see how the side rails fit. You can see why it was important to make sure that there was space here for these washers to fit so that the bolt and the washer themselves weren't running up against these one by sixes when, when we put them in. But you can see how nice this looks being cut in and flush to the post itself when you have this side rail uh, able to be flush with that post. And these came out really nicely. A lot of the, again, a lot of the knot work and the distressing of the wood I think really uh, came out well. You can see there where you have these two by twos on the top and the bottom and how they uh, really just help add a little bit extra depth uh, to the footboard piece. And uh, here are just a couple finished shots you can kind of see you know the whole thing put together. Looks really great. We were so happy with the outcome of it. Such a great looking bed. Whoa, all right, that was a busy three weeks. I'm a, did I remember to put on a different shirt? No, it's the same one, okay. Wow, I'm exhausted. That was a long three weeks. I'm, uh, I can't believe I'm done. Uh, really, it was a great project. I'm super happy to be finished with it. I'm so happy about how the bed turned out. Uh, as you can see, I made some mistakes along the way and I had to figure some stuff out because I didn't really have a plan going in. 
Um, but if you enjoyed this project, if you found it educational or fun or entertaining, please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up. Uh, let me know how I'm doing, how the channel's doing. If you have any questions or comments, please let us know below. If you maybe have more experience with this and you have other ways of doing it that may be easier and uh, great information for other people watching to follow, please put that down below. And likewise, if you're new to this like me and you have questions, uh, ask those and I'll do my best to get to them and answer uh, the best way I can. But until next time, again, thanks for watching from the ranch. We'll see you then.